I'm Heather, and I'm one of the technicians here at Grady Veterinary Hospital, and I'm calling, or talking to you today about first aid for your pets. The first thing that you want to remember is that pets that are injured may be fearful, scared, and they may injure you, not because they particularly want to or need to, it's because they are scared. Some cats will scratch, some will bite, same thing with dogs. And the first thing that you want to remember before you approach your dog to move it, if they are injured, is you may have to put a muzzle on them. There are a lot of items you can use at home to place a muzzle on your pet. You can use a necktie, you can use a pantyhose, and you can even use like a bathrobe tie would be fine. If you do have gauze available, that would be perfect. What you would want to do is actually make a loop. Now as you make the loop, you'll place the tie over the muzzle and you'll tighten down. And then you'll wrap it underneath the chin and around the ears and to a bow tie. You do not want to place the muzzle on your pet if they are vomiting. Um, you definitely can use other means, especially with a dog, if they are trying to bite and if they have vomited. You do not want to place the muzzle. One thing you can use is a towel. When you go to approach your animal, you, will have, you may have to pick them up for transport to the veterinarian. And what you'll need to use is the, the towel. You can use the towel lengthwise and place it around their neck and kind of over their head and hold on to their neck. Once you have their, their head stabilized, you can reach underneath their head and underneath their, their belly. And from there, you can easily move or you can pick up and place into your car to go to the veterinarian. For a small dog or cat that has been injured, a towel may be needed to secure or restrain an injured animal. What you can do is actually place it over top of the animal and then scoop the entire animal up, being sure to support the entire body. Cats may try to bolt and they actually could turn and try to bite and scratch. The blanket will have a deterrent as a barrier between you and your pet. Cats with small dogs in transport, you will definitely want to put into either a carrier, a laundry basket, or even a box just so that they stay secure and they stay calm during the transport to the veterinarian. The big thing here is to you yourself remain calm and quiet so that your animal can be can remain calm and quiet. And for larger dogs that are either limping or if they are injured that need to be transported immediately to your car to a veterinarian, you can use a large blanket, you can use a throw rug, um, you can have two different people, but you'll wrap the dog as if it were like a stretcher. As she's laying down, two people, one on either side, can lift the blanket up and hoist her up and into the, into the vehicle. Some of the common injuries occur in animals could be bleeding from a laceration. What you will do with something that is bleeding actively is you'll want to place either gauze, even a washcloth, onto the actively bleeding site and apply pressure for at least three minutes. This is something you don't want to keep checking to see if it's still bleeding. You want to keep the pressure on and if the bandage or washcloth, whatever you may have, becomes saturated, instead of removing it, you'll put, place another washcloth or gauze on top of it and continue the pressure. This pressure should be applied until you, re you reach your veterinarian. If it is in a place such as the leg, you may secure it with some uh, medical tape, but you do not want that tape to be too tight on the leg. Um, if you have an extra passenger, that would be ideal. Another common injury is limping or a fractured leg. Do not try to splint or, or make any kind of cast for the animal. That can actually do more harm than good. The best thing is to just immobilize your, your pet and place them in your car, making sure that they are not going to further injure themselves and take them to your veterinarian immediately. Another common injury is our burns. Sometimes animals can be burned by chemicals and they can also be burned by fire. Chemical burns are something that you should immediately wash off with water, with lots of water. And fire burns, you can put cold compresses on that area, area and immediately take to your veterinarian. Seizures are something that is common for many dogs and cats. During a seizure, it is very stressful for the owner and it is important again to remain calm. Dogs are different from humans in which you do not have to worry about them swallowing their tongues, so do not go anywhere near their mouth. 
definitely animals that are having a seizure are disoriented and anytime you're near their face or hands, they could bite you accidentally. So steer clear of their face when they're having a seizure. The big thing to remember is just to keep your animal away from objects that, they, that can injure them and definitely off of furniture that they may fall off of or falling downstairs. After the seizure has stopped, the best thing is to keep your animal quiet and transfer to the veterinarian immediately. Animal poisons are also a problem for dogs and cats. If they are harmful, harmful to you, they will be harmful to your pet. If an animal has come in contact with any kind of poison to their skin or eyes, you will need to wash it with water. If there are any instructions on the bottle as to cleaning the area with water or soap, definitely do that immediately. Poisons that may have been ingested, including medications, that is something that you will definitely want to call Animal Poison Control Center. There is a follow-up video from Robert that touches on all kinds of poisons and toxins that your animal may ingest. That is something that immediate action may be required.